He's home. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How are we feeling, Orange Nation? Kai and Anthony is coming home. Kai and Anthony has chosen to play college basketball at Syracuse University. I am so excited. Leave a comment in the comment section below how excited you are that Kai and Anthony is coming to Syracuse. Hello, everyone. This is Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. Thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we are talking all things Kai and Anthony because we got his decision, and he's coming to Syracuse. Later on in the podcast, I'm going to break down the 2025 recruiting class where it sits right now for Syracuse. Obviously, a big step forward with Kai and Anthony joining the class. He's now the fourth player in the 2025 recruiting class for Syracuse. We're going to go over a scouting report of Kai and Anthony, but just not from myself, right? I'm not a basketball scout. That's why we're going to hear from three different recruiting experts over the course of the past several months. We've had on plenty of recruiting experts talking about Kai and Anthony. So we're going to hear from them, their thoughts on Kai Ann's game, where he's really good at, what Syracuse can anticipate, as well as what he still needs to improve on. We're going to go over the whole scouting report of Kai and Anthony from those recruiting experts. But first, we are going to start off this podcast talking about this decision. And before we get to all that, This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Unbelievable news. Brian Anthony is headed to Syracuse. Here is some background for you guys in case you guys aren't aware. Maybe you're following along this channel for the very first time. And if you're a first-time listener, hello, welcome. And if you are an everydayer, shout out to you guys. You've been following along this whole time, right? So maybe it's a little bit of repetitive information, but we have to get it out of the way, right? Kai and Anthony is a 2025 consensus four-star recruit and a top 50 overall player in the country across every major recruiting site. This is a big time recruit for Syracuse basketball. He is six foot five, 185 pound guard from New York. And Kyan Anthony is the son of Syracuse legend Carmelo Anthony, who led Syracuse to its only national title in 2003. Kyan Anthony's official final three obviously, Syracuse, the winner, but also USC and Auburn. Now, in the coming weeks leading up to the decision, Auburn was trimmed off, so it really became Syracuse and USC. But most, if not all, of the analyst buzz out there signaled that Syracuse was going to be the team that would prevail. And guess what? They did prevail. And on the 7 p.m. Brooklyn podcast tonight with Carmelo Anthony and Kid Mero, obviously his mother was there as well. He announced his college decision with tens of thousands of Orange fans watching, tens of thousands of Orange fans listening. And at exactly 5.59 p.m. Eastern, that's right, I charted it, 5.59 p.m. Eastern, Kyan Anthony chose to take his talents to Syracuse. Overall, this is a tremendous moment for the program. It was much anticipated, and I'm very pleased that Syracuse came out on top for a kid like Kyan Anthony. And I think there are plenty of reasons why you should be excited about this commitment. And let's start off with the big one, the obvious one. We cannot ignore the elephant in the room. And that is that there's the legacy factor. He is the son of Carmelo Anthony, who led Syracuse in his true freshman season to a national championship, became a what, 10-time All-Star in the NBA. He's well on his way into the Hall of Fame, Carmelo Anthony. Syracuse is in his blood. It's in his blood, and he's coming home. It was much anticipated, and I'm just so glad they were able to get him. Syracuse was favored, 
but there were a lot of challengers. USC is a good program. Auburn's one of the best programs in the country. Florida State was involved at one point. But Kai and Anthony chose to go to Syracuse. He chose to go to Syracuse. The legacy factor, obviously, is a big reason why a lot of people are excited. But don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. Kai and Anthony, the second reason why you should really be excited about this, he's really good. He's a really, really good prospect, guys. We could talk all we want about legacy. Legacy is cool and all. That's great. Kai and Anthony is a consensus top 50 player in the country. He is a high-end four-star recruit. Kai and Anthony is the number one overall player in New York State. Syracuse isn't just getting the son of Carmelo Anthony. No, 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 folks. They are getting a really good basketball player. If Kyan Anthony's last name was Smith, if his name was Kyan Smith, I would still be ecstatic about this commitment. This is a big-time prospect. Big time. And one of the things that Kyan mentioned in the months leading up to this commitment was that he wanted a school that would recruit him, not his parents, not his father, recruit him, the person, him, the player. And Syracuse, they had to do that. They had to do that. Carmelo and his mother, they stayed out of it. Obviously, their their parents, they're going to offer advice, but they stayed out of it. They said, no, 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 we're hands off. Kai and Anthony, you're going to make the decision that's best for yourself. It just so happened to be that that school is the very same school where his father went to, Carmelo Anthony. And actually, I found something very interesting on the podcast that we were all watching for Kai and Anthony's decision that his parents intentionally didn't name him Carmelo. They named him Kai and for a reason. They wanted him to create his own path. And he decided that his own path just so happened to be the same path as his father. It just so happened to be the same path. We'll talk more about him as a player. We will. That, that's coming up in the next segment when we give a whole scouting report. But the bottom line is that, yes, the legacy factor is really cool. But he's a really good basketball player. And we should be excited about that. This is not some one or two star player, even a three star player. Nothing against those guys. They're they're very good. They're very talented. But one one, one star, two star, three star, those are projects. Those are guys who develop over time. No, 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 no. Kai and Anthony is really good right now. And he's only getting better, folks. He's only getting better. And I think another reason why you can be excited about this commitment is it once again reinforces that Syracuse basketball can get top end talent to commit to Syracuse. They can. They can do it. Since Adrian Autry has taken over, he's gotten some elite high school recruits. He has. These are facts. In 2024, so this past recruiting cycle, he got Donnie Freeman, a consensus five-star player. Consensus five-star, Donnie Freeman. He got Elijah Moore, a consensus four-star in that class. In 2025, obviously, he's got Kyan Anthony now in it. But he also, earlier, back in... May, he got Sadiq White, a five-star on two major recruiting services. So Syracuse basketball can get top-end talent from high school. They can do it with Adrian Entry. Whether or not the prospects hit or not is, is a whole separate conversation. But as far as if you look at a recruiting ranking and where Syracuse gets its players, they're getting big-time players now. Donnie Freeman, Elijah Moore. Kyan Anthony, Sadiq White, those are big time recruits. So I think just in a nutshell, the three big reasons why you should obviously be very excited about this commitment. Number one is the legacy factor. We can't ignore the elephant in the room, the legacy factor here. It's so cool. It's amazing. That's why I'm saying he's home. He's got Syracuse in his blood. He's home. The other reason is because he's a great basketball player. And now it further signifies that Syracuse basketball can get elite players to come to Syracuse out of high school. So those are the three reasons why 
this commitment is such a big deal for the Orange. Now, I've been teasing it for a bit. Coming up, we got a whole scouting report for you guys. What can Syracuse fans expect from Kai and Anthony? Nothing delivers comfort and joy quite like the unrivaled quality and taste of Omaha Steaks. This year, skip the holiday hustle and bustle and save 50% off gourmet gifts site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, get a $30 reward card when you shop early and store an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. With five generations of experience, they constantly deliver the world's best steak experience, and the gifting experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to deliver the perfect gift with thoughtfully curated gift packages starting at $89.99. From legendary steaks to mouthwatering desserts and more, save 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com, plus our listeners get an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. And a $30 reward card when you shop early. That's 50% off at omahasteaks.com. And an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. Minimum purchase may apply. This is Locked on Syracuse with Jackson Holzer. We are breaking down Kai and Anthony's college decision, which landed in favor of Syracuse. That's right. Kai and Anthony, the son of Syracuse legend Carmelo Anthony, is taking his talents to the orange. And now we are going to go over a complete scouting report of Kai and Anthony and what you guys should expect from him when he gets to campus next season. Now, just to start off, just just because I mentioned it off the top of this podcast, but just to reiterate, Kai and Anthony is a 2025 class. He is a consensus four-star recruit and a consensus top 50 overall player in the country, the number one overall player in New York State. For this segment, you are going to hear from three different major recruiting analysts about Kai and the player, where he's good, maybe where he needs to improve. But overall, you're going to get a good idea of what to expect from Kai and Anthony in this segment. Let's start off with Jamie Shaw. Now, for those that don't know who Jamie Shaw is, Jamie Shaw is a senior national recruiting analyst over at On3 Recruits. Jamie was on this podcast back in April when Kyan was still a junior in high school. And here is what Jamie had to say about Kyan Anthony. Kyan is a late bloomer as a player. He's a six foot five shooting guard. He's continuing to find his own footing, um, but he's on a rapid rise with his development. He's got skill uh, that you can definitely see. He's got feel for the game, um, you know, and he's still growing into his body. He's thin framed. He's only a junior in high school. Um, so still got a, a ways to go to kind of fill out you know, physically, naturally, as as people do at 16, 17 years old. Um, he can shoot the ball. He can put it on the floor. Um, you know, he, he's got legit size. And uh, he's continuing each time that he steps on the floor to get more confident and, you know, to ultimately get better. Once again, that's on three senior recruiting analyst, Jamie Shaw, talking about Kai and Anthony. I think the big takeaway about what you just heard is that Kai and Anthony – is a late bloomer and that he is only getting better. He's only getting better. Keep in mind that interview was back in April. He has not hit his ceiling yet. He hasn't. And that's a good thing for Syracuse. Now he's pretty polished, obviously, but there's still plenty of room for him to grow. Ryan Anthony actually admitted it during the decision that he wasn't very good at one point in his basketball career. He admitted it himself, that he was not really good. There were a lot of players that were better than him. But he kept working. He kept getting better. And over time, he was lapping those guys that were once better than him. So Kyan Anthony is a bit of a late bloomer. He's a really good prospect, and he's only getting better. This is kind of similar to Donnie Freeman. Donnie Freeman was someone when he committed to Syracuse, he committed to Syracuse in May of 2023. He was not a five-star player. He was actually a four-star. Now, albeit he was he was a very good four-star. He's a top 40 overall player in the country. But he improved significantly from the time that he committed to Syracuse, which was in May of 2023, to what he is now. 
which is a consensus five-star recruit, literally the best or the highest ranking recruit since Carmelo Anthony. So those are kind of the uh, the parallels, if you will, that Donnie Freeman was kind of a late bloomer. Kyan Anthony himself admitted that he was a late bloomer. And to me, that's a good thing because that means the, the sky's the limit for a guy like Kyan Anthony. He's already a consensus top 50 player. What's he going to be a couple months from now? Remember, he's still got basically a whole year until he actually officially sets foot on Syracuse's campus and plays a game. Kyan Anthony is only getting better, folks. So that is on three senior recruiting expert, Jamie Shaw. Let's now hear from our man, Sam Land. Sam has been on the podcast multiple times. Sam is a recruiting expert over at zagsblog.com. But the sound you're about to hear is actually from a podcast in late July, and it's going to be about Kai and Anthony's play style. So let's hear from Sam. Very similar to his father in the fact that he can score the basketball. I mean, that is Kyan's calling card. If you watch his games, he's getting up a lot of shots. He has a bag that is developed. Like, he knows what spots he can get to. He knows what shots he can make. And he makes them a lot more often than he doesn't make them. So, really, I would just say he's kind of, you know, your prolific scorer. He's going to put the ball in the hoop. He doesn't necessarily have to be a ball-dominant player. Once again, that's Sam Lance over at zagsblog.com, a recruiting expert. Sam Lance, as you just heard, Kai and Anthony is a scorer. And two things to me jump out from what you just heard from Sam Lance. He mentioned that there is that similarity between Kai and Anthony and Carmelo Anthony in the sense that they are both scorers. However, they do have completely different styles. Or... I should say that Carmelo Anthony maybe was more refined, especially at this point in high school. Carmelo Anthony was the number one overall player in high school when he committed to Syracuse. So they are a little bit different. The first one is that Carmelo was bigger. Carmelo was six foot eight, I think two twenty, two thirty when he played at Syracuse. Kai and Anthony's six foot five, one eighty. So there's that big size difference. Also, Carmelo Anthony was excellent in the post, something that Kai and Anthony has yet to develop. I left that part out of the podcast in terms of sound, but you'll hear from the next one that Sam Kaiser 24-7 High School Hoops. He mentioned that he doesn't necessarily have that post name yet. I left that out. But still, I, I think the best way to put it is that they're both scorers, even if they kind of score in different ways. They are both scorers, so that's a similarity. The other thing that kind of jumped out to me from what Sam said back in July is that Kai and Anthony is not necessarily a ball dominant player, which was very unlike his father. Carmelo Anthony needed the ball. And he was really good when he had the ball, but he needed the ball. Now, for better or worse, Ryan Anthony is not that type of player. He doesn't necessarily require the ball to be in his hands at all times. And this is going to be for a podcast later on when I project the 2025-2026 roster, kind of a way too early scope of how it's shaping out to be. I don't know how many ball-dominant players as of this moment would be on Syracuse's roster for next season, for better or for worse. I just don't know, but that's just something that jumped out to me. The first one was that he is like his father in the sense that they both score the basketball, but they do do it in different ways. And the second one is that Ty and Anthony is not necessarily a ball-dominant player, which is completely the opposite of his father. Carmelo Anthony needed the ball, and he was really good when he had the ball. All right, so that's Sam Lance over at zagsblog.com. Thank you, Sam Lance. Now, let's hear from Sam Kaiser on Twitter. He is better known as 24-7 HS Hoops. Sam is a high school and college recruiting analyst for League Ready, and he was on a podcast actually here on Locked on Syracuse about a week after Jamie was, so that's around mid-April, so months ago. Here is what he had to say about where Kyan Anthony can improve as a player. He's an exciting prospect. He's still got, you know, some things to work on as far as defense and creation are concerned. But as far as his shot making, he's about as good as anybody uh, available in the 2025 class right now. 
Well, thank you, Sam. That is Sam Kaiser, League Ready Recruiting Analyst, talking about where Kai and Anthony can improve. And I think the most important part of that, there's one word that really sticks out, and that is defense. It's defense. If we're going to draw comparisons, I guess, to this season or parallels to this season, if you will, I think we know through two games that Syracuse basketball has not been the greatest defensive team in the world. Now, they're not adding Kai and Anthony for this year. They're adding him for next year. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But honestly, even if Kai and Anthony is not the greatest defender in the world, it's not the end of the world, okay? First of all, most prospects are not perfect. They all have some sort of weakness that they have to get better at. But here's the thing, A, we're going to talk about it in the next segment when we take a look at the 2025 recruiting class for Syracuse. But they have one particular prospect, I'm not going to say who just yet, but they have one prospect who might be considered the best defender in high school basketball right now. So they're already getting a big defender in this year's recruiting cycle. They are. So shout out Coach Autry and Co. for getting that kid. I'll get to him when we get to the next segment. Assuming also that Autry attacks the portal next year and tries to get players that play really good defense. I don't think it's the end of the world. If Kai and Anthony is not the best defender in the world, you're going to need a score. And if Kai and Anthony could be that for next season and for years to come, I'm totally fine with that. Not everyone's going to be the greatest defender. It just can't be necessarily like this year where I don't know who's a great defender on Syracuse right now. You get what I'm saying? So overall, That is Sam Kaiser talking about where Kai and Anthony can improve. I'd like to shout out all the three major recruiting analysts for those clips. Thank you all so much to them. That is a scouting report of Kai and Anthony. He's coming home, folks. Kai and Anthony chose Syracuse tonight. So with that being said, we've talked a lot about Kai and Anthony. Where does the 2025 class sit now for Syracuse? We're going to talk about that next. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets and Syracuse football, by the way, let's talk a little Syracuse football for a second. They are an eight and a half point underdog at Cal on Saturday, which is tomorrow with the money line at plus two sixty. That's right. Plus two sixty. You think Syracuse can cover or better yet pull off the upset. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today and you'll get started with $158 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. And make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This is Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. We are going over Kai and Anthony's decision, which is good for Syracuse because guess what, Orange Nation? He's coming home. That's right. The son of Carmelo Anthony, Kai and Anthony, tonight announced that he's attending Syracuse University. Early on in the podcast, we talked about the decision itself, why you should be excited. We just went over a scouting report of Kai and Anthony, and now we're going to talk about the 2025 recruiting class now that Kai and Anthony is here. Where does it sit right now for the Orange? Well, let me tell you. First of all, the class in terms of how many players, there are four players now in Syracuse's 2025 class. Now, I'm going to say as a qualifier, guys, this is good news. This is a good qualifier, so pay attention. Has Syracuse played the greatest through two games? Not necessarily. I know they've won both those games, but they haven't played the greatest. But I got good news. It has not impacted the recruiting front for Syracuse basketball. It has not. That is the best news. And here's why. All three. Prior prospects to Carmelo Anthony, they all signed their official letters of intent to play for Syracuse. And here's the important part about signing those letters. Those are binding. This is not the transfer portal when you can just sign on to a team and then renege on that. You can't do that coming out of high school. As soon as you put your name 
on that piece of paper, as soon as you sign your name or print your name, whatever it is, that's binding between the stool and the player. So all three prior commits to Kai and Anthony are officially locked in with Syracuse. That is terrific news. Now, Kai and Anthony, I don't think is a technically officially signed, but the fact that he just announced that he's coming to Syracuse, I think we can all make the safe assumption that he will be the fourth player to sign in the class. Okay. I think we can all do that. Relax. All right. So coming into today, I looked it up. Syracuse had the 17th best recruiting class over on 24 seven sports and they were 44th over on on three. I don't know where they sit right now, but I would imagine that they are a lot higher now that Kai and Anthony has committed for context. I would not be surprised if on 24 seven sports, they moved into the top 10 for the 2025 class. And I would not be surprised if on three gave Syracuse a significant bump, perhaps in the top 25. So that could be two major recruiting sites giving Syracuse high marks for their 2025 class. As far as the players in that class, besides Ty and Anthony, we haven't talked about them yet. So let's do it right now. I already teased this player, not by name, but I teased this player. Sadiq White, six foot eight, 180 pound forward from North Carolina. White is ranked between the 15th and 48th overall player in the country. I would say that's a pretty good range between 15 and 48. Sadiq White is an ESPN five star player and a 24 7 sports composite five star player. In fact, In fact, you ready for this? Sneak White is ranked higher than Kai and Anthony. And I was very excited when they got Sneak White. There is that podcast back in May when he committed. Sneak White is ranked the highest in Syracuse's class. And this is the guy that might be the best defender in the country. At least that's what Sam Kaiser said back in April, 24-7 high school hoops. Those were his words. He might be the best defender in the country. Sadiq White. Still got to work on his shot. He might not be the greatest scorer when it comes to Syracuse, but he can defend. And that's huge. We need some defenders. Sadiq White is coming to Syracuse, and he's going to help on defense. That's right, Sadiq White. Next up, we got Luke Fennel, six foot five, 180 pound combo guard from Australia. And to save your ears, I am not going to try giving an Australian accent. I can't do it, okay? There's a lot of things that I'm good at. There's a lot of things that I'm bad at. One thing that I am particularly really bad at is trying accents. I'm awful. So I am not going to try to give an Australian accent, but feel free to make one if you want. Fennel, uh, aside from that, Luke Fennel is ranked between the 124th best player in the country to unranked in the nation. But I would not read too much into the unranking part because he's international. So some of these recruiting sites, they, they just don't have him because he's international. That's just how it goes. Now, as far as where he is ranked, he is a four-star over on 24-7 Sports, and he is a three-star over on On3. ESPN and Rivals, they don't have him listed, but bear with them. It's because he's an international player. Actually, when Luke Fennell committed to Syracuse, no site had him. None. And then eventually, as time goes on, they're like, oh, let's give an evaluation of him as far as where he ranks in the class and what his star ranking should be. And then that's when 24-7 Sports comes up with four-star, on three comes up with three-star. So maybe ESPN and Rivals will do that. But Luke Fennell is a pretty good prospect, at least according to 24-7 sports recruiting expert Travis Branham, who said that Fennell can score at all three levels. He's a very good long-range shooter. He's a very good playmaker. He's really good with the ball in his hands. So this is someone who could be a big point guard for Syracuse basketball next year. Not sure if he'll be the starting point guard. That might be something that they look for in the portal. But he's definitely going to help Syracuse next season. That's what Travis Branham said, that Possibly the best thing about him is that he's got day one upside where he can really step on a floor day one and can compete in the ACC. So that's Luke Fennell, right? I think according to Travis Brennan, he still needs to get a little bit more athletic. Not the most athletic guy in the world, but overall, he can pass. 
and he can shoot. I'll take that combination any day of the week from our starting point guard. Potentially our starting point guard next year. Maybe he's the backup. And finally, rounding out the 2025 class, everyone besides Ty and Anthony. We've talked a lot about Ty and Anthony on this podcast. We got Aaron Womack. Aaron Womack is six foot five. He's a 170 pound guard slash forward from Wisconsin. Womack ranks between the 269th and unranked player in the country. He's a three star over on on three, 24 seven sports and rivals. He is not yet rated on ESPN. Aaron Womack is your prototypical project recruit. This is not someone who I would expect to contribute right away. And that's okay. Because the three players above him in the recruiting cycle all should be day one contributors to various degrees. So Aaron Womack, he's a prime redshirt candidate. He's probably going to sit the year, learn. And what you're hoping for from Aaron Womack is that he can develop into a good college player over the course of a year or two. That's what you're hoping for. So he is the final player in the class of 2025, which now has four players. Kai and Anthony, shout out to Kai and Anthony. Nice pick, choosing Syracuse. You got Sadiq White, a five-star. You got Luke Fennell, a four-star over on 24-7 Sports. And you got Aaron Womack, a three-star. So I would consider that a pretty good 2025 recruiting class. As far as what is coming up on the podcast, and there's a lot, so please bear with me. And thank you all so much for making it to this point of the podcast. Really appreciate it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Let's talk about what's to come. Tomorrow, we're not talking recruiting. We're back to the games. We're back to the games. That's right. It's a doubleheader. Syracuse basketball is playing Youngstown State at 1 p.m. Eastern. And Syracuse football is playing on the road against Cal at 3 p.m. Eastern. Both those games are tomorrow. So that means two full post-game reaction podcasts coming your way. We're playing games on Saturday. It's not recruiting. We're playing games, both basketball and football. Now, as far as next week, here are two podcasts that I have in mind, and feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below on these ideas. But I was thinking about talking about the 2025 class more in depth and wondering whether or not if Syracuse is going to be done recruiting in 2025 or if they should continue recruiting in 2025. So that is one topic idea I have. And another topic idea I have is a way too early roster outlook for Syracuse basketball for next season, right? Because they got some seniors. They now got four freshmen. So we're going to talk about what the roster is shaping out to look like at least when the season ends, hopefully in April. Hopefully in April. Most likely it'll be in March. But whenever the season ends, we're going to talk about what the roster will look like and what to do with the roster going forward. Thank you all for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. And for your second listen, check out the Locked On ACC podcast, Alex Donald and Kenton Gibbs. They keep it real and they bring you the truth about where your favorite ACC team stands within the conference. You can find Locked On ACC on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Folks, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications so you know right away. When I am dropping the next podcast, Kai and Anthony is coming home.